To local news now, after more than two years of work, Lakeland College's Energy Center is finally complete. Gerard Lampau was on hand for the ribbon cutting ceremony, celebrating the much anticipated opening for the Lloydminster campus. What we have is an actually fully functional power plant, and so this gives our students uh, an advantage when they hit industry. The Lloydminster campus of Lakeland College in its 25th year of operation is celebrating the opening of its energy center. The facility offers training for students in the heavy oil and gas industry. I was really impressed as I did the, uh, as I did the tour through just how, how practical that experience uh, is going to become for, for students here and what a wonderful facility this is. At a price tag of some $25 million and two years in construction, Lakeland College students are about to benefit from some of the best in heavy oil tutoring available in Western Canada. So when we are running, we take uh, gas from shutting down the regular heating system. We burn it here, produce power, produce heat, and actually make a profit for the college. The power plant generates about 300 kilowatts for the campus grid, a saving of some $25 a day. About 140 students will be taking the heavy oil power engineering program this academic year. Because this facility is actually operated by the students, but it provides uh, the utilities uh, for this whole complex here. So, uh, so it's pretty cool. It's, um, it's, it, you know, it's very hands-on and it gives them a lot of uh, kind of real-life experience and responsibility. Several industry partners, community stakeholders, municipal and bi-provincial leaders have shared in the journey. When you're talking about post-secondary education, when you're talking about training the next generation of the people that we need working in this industry, you need to be able to have a longer-term horizon and longer-term vision. And Lakeland College has always had that. This facility will reinforce and innovate the spirit of Lloyd Minister and the region, the provinces and the country and will produce long-term benefits for the petroleum industry on a global scale. Gerard Lampau, Newcap News. Welcome back. It's a big day for Cold Lake residents looking for alternatives to their daily commute as the city launches its free public transit system today. Cold Lake Mayor and Council were on hand for the official ribbon cutting yesterday as they introduced some of the buses being used for the service. Now Mayor Copeland says they have been working on bringing transit to the city since the fall of 2014 and will make the area much more livable for those without vehicles. Uh, just going to make it so that you can get around Coal Lake uh, with your groceries and go to Walmart, the Tri-City Mall, and go to the doctors, the hospital. You know, we've compassed the schools, the high school, so the route is sort of planned around people's activities. Cold Lake Transit is beginning to run two buses at a time, one running a north circle, another a south, from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Saturday. What's more, the service is free for now. Colpin says fees will be reviewed in the upcoming budget, but services like transit tend not to be revenue generators anyway. When you run transit, you never make money on transit, so it's just like having a recreational facility. You're lucky to get, you know, for every 10 cents you spend, you're lucky to get 4 cents back in revenue. The city will be using six surplus buses they bought from Calgary for $5,000 each. Starting September 1st, pet owners in a border city will have some new rules to get used to. On Monday, council gave final approval to a revised bylaw after lowering the intact animal registration fee from $150 to $60. The recommended amount now that we're going for intact dogs, I feel, is, is appropriate. This is the first new domestic animal bylaw in 35 years and comes with a few notable adjustments. All animals, now including cats, must be licensed and those licenses have new annual fees associated with them. There's also a new $75 fine for anyone caught letting their dog or cat roam freely off their property and each household is allowed a maximum of five pets. When you do things, you want to make sure that you're doing it right and uh, you have all the information and, and you want to do what's, what's best for citizens, in particular those with, uh, with, with animals. There's going to be a bit of an education process going on. We've already done some. We're going to reach out to the community and let them know what the new rules are and how they, how they could be affected by them. Last month, city administration revealed uh, peace officers will be responding to complaints rather than patrolling neighborhoods looking for violations. General Manager of Public Safety Doug Rodwell says his officers are ready for the transition. I think uh, enforce is the wrong word. I think it's they, they work with the community to make sure that they can resolve the issues. 
for full details on any rules, fees and fines, you can go to lloydminster.ca slash animal of safety. Well, there's nothing like a good old fashioned burger and well, they usually tend to taste even better when a portion of the proceeds go to a special cause. Tomorrow marks the seventh annual Cruising for a Cause event here in Lloydminster and across the country. People can come out and buy a teen burger, a dollar from every teen burger sold goes directly to the fight against MS and giving hope to people living with this disease. Canada has the highest rate of MS in the world and many have the disease here at home. The Lloydminster and surrounding area is known to have a higher than average per capita rate of MS and, and we see that every day with more and more people walking through our doors who've been newly diagnosed. Last year the Border City had a record breaking year with more than $13,000 raised. They're hoping to beat that number this year. Tomorrow's event will also include a dunk tank, a car show and many other fun activities.